right, everybody, welcome back. It's a couple days after Christmas. We're still in the snow. How are you guys doing? It's pretty snowy all over the place <clears throat> in the world, it looks like. Are you guys all uh, food out? Food coma? <laughs> I love leftover turkey. I could eat it every single day. <clears throat> so I thought, well, let's make a little gro a gnome um, sitting on a cupcake. <laughs> so if you look down below in the links or in the uh, description of this video, you'll see uh, a link. And that's the link to uh, get the traceable for this so you can play along i hope you um download it and let's see so let me get my chat up here hey dixie okay there we go so I thought this was fitting. <laughs> and I have my watercolors out. I'm just going to give them a spray. <clears throat> so this could be colored with colored pencil. It could be painted uh, with acrylic. Whatever you want to use it for. It's yours to print out and have fun with. I'm going to be using a watercolor and it's not going to be like crazy detailed or anything. So anyone can do this. This is beginner friendly. And if you've never done watercolor before, it's a great starter because it's very simple uh, way I do these illustrations. So I like using... <clears throat> Uh, round brushes mainly. I uh, don't use a whole lot of flats within watercolor. Um, I might if I had uh, bigger sections to do maybe, but I have some fairly large size uh, bigger brushes if I need to work big. But I tend to go for the silver black velvet. This is a number four. This will probably be a good one um to use or a number six a little bit bigger let's see there this is a number six so it's a little bit not much there's not much of a difference but there is a little bit um hey netty <clears throat> hey carol there's a link in the description below if you go, don't see it right off press see more and it'll um, drop down and you'll see that link so you can uh, play along or do it on your own time. And I thought I would put a little bling in it this time. <laughs> I have these awesome watercolors that were gifted to me from Jilly. And such pretty colors. And I haven't really used them, so... Maybe we'll use some of these. So download the uh, traceable. And uh, if you have any problems with the, the link, let me know. Because sometimes I do goof up on that. But um, feel free to message me or um, on uh, Instagram or Facebook. Or leave a message below. That'll work too. So let's see. I'm gonna put that one up there. Um, so he's a Christmas groan. Gnome. I, I keep saying groan. I don't know why. But I just have this tendency to do that. <laughs> you're, you're quilting? Awesome. Hey, Lori. So 
I'm going to, um, did I have, let's see, I do have a, this is uh, what he looks like when he's all done. Um, I think I'm going to make this uh, maybe pink instead so his little suit shows up more. Um, very simple. This is a quick one, guys. So, so, and again, you can um, change it up. You could have them holding something different or take the candy cane out. I might put green in the candy cane. Um, as you know, I don't mind using other products when I do watercolor, like uh colored pencils or gouache if I need to put something extra in or not quite getting the effect I want then I'll pull out my colored pencils and I might just do that again or I'll add more pen work so let's start off with hmm Let's do his jacket first. So his jacket's a really nice red. Uh, and I want a fairly dark red. So I have some alizarin crimson here. And I want it to be fairly uh, opaque, like deep. So I don't have as much water and I'm doing wet into dry, meaning the paper is dry. And this way I have more control on where the paint is going. But you can do wet into wet if you like that uh, blooming effect that you get with some paint colors. And I think he's cute. Now, uh, watercolor is very translucent so uh, you kind of have to remember that so you'll still see the lines through your area and that's fine it's basically like coloring in a coloring book this one a lot of these ones that I've done um, in the month of December are more illustrative so they're uh, a little more on the line side in the whimsical I think it's cute and you can change up the colors to whatever you want uh, So everyone got a uh, food coma. <laughs> Did you overeat like most people? I did. I love turkey dinner. And not much for the sweets, but I do love the turkey dinner, mashed potatoes and yummy, yummy. Okay, so I'm going to do the poinsettia in probably a pinky color. Or let's do it in the, there, yeah, let's do it in the pretty colors here that we got. Let's see, we got some, that's pretty, I like that color. Let's try that. I'm going to wet my palette. Let it soak in a little bit. It almost looks like a peachy color. I love those peach colored ones. Hey, Brenda. Another traceable for you guys if you want to play along. It's in the links below or in the description below. So just let 
this one needs to soak a bit for it to get nice and thick. It's got lots of shimmer in it. These are great. Uh, it's in Japanese, so I'm not sure what they're called. Right. And I can always uh, lighten this too. So let's put this in that pretty, pretty pink. I'm going to leave the center part and put mm, maybe gold in or yellow. We'll see. And then maybe some color pencils to lighten them or darken them in areas. Let's start off just with a base layer of paint color. These are a little bit uh, more opaque. Not much, but there is a little bit of opaqueness to these. So I'll probably go in with um, maybe colored pencil to add a little bit more um, shading or highlights. I'm mi kind of mixed media, <laughs> I guess you could say. If I have a product that will help me uh, get my desired outcome, then I'll use it. So I'm not one to only go with one particular. Genzai Tambi. Yes, that's them. Thanks, Brenda. All right, so that's nice. Let it dry. And this is watercolor paper. It's just the uh, Canson's uh, 140 watercolor paper. Um, let's do some green. I have some bright leaf green here. Put that in for the holly. Now you do have to watch out for when you're painting beside a color you've already done because you could easily have it bleed. Hey Terry, good to see you. And I think I'm going to do his mitt screen too. So where is it? There's one mid here, and there's this other one holding a flower pot of poinsettias. That, and his shoes are going to be green. This could be uh, scaled down too for cards, would be cute. Uh, you could also uh, remove the flowers and put something else in his hand, maybe a gift. And this would work for any time of the year then. Or you could change the flower so that it represents a month. That would be cute. So figure out what the flower is for that month. Alrighty, and oh, forgot to put my candy stripes in. 
my candy cane. I'm going to put some green in here too. I don't know if they still make them, but I remember when I was a kid, they had a green stripe with the um, red. Do you remember that? I remember those. That's what my mom used to do is put candy canes on the tree. And then every day leading up to Christmas, we were allowed to have a candy cane. So that was one of my traditions with my kids. Alrighty, and then the icing on the cake, uh, we can make a pink up, uh, Quinn Red maybe, let's see what this one is, yeah, that's Queen Red, or, hmm, oh, let's make another pink, so maybe this, that looks the same. Let's do this frosting. A bright pink. Yeah. It's an old tradition. We didn't have live, uh, well, we had live trees for a little bit, but then when my mom, I guess when we were, hmm, I don't know, 10 or so, then they bought. <laughs> Do you remember one of the, those white trees, white Christmas trees, so plastic ones? <laughs> That's what we had. But it looked pretty when all the lights were on it and, and the colorful bulbs. We used to, and we used to uh, put the angel hair over the bulbs so it would glisten. <laughs> I remember the screen stripe. I think they were a uh, better gray. Okay. Yeah, maybe. They were yummy. Ah, stuff back then, though, was made so much better. Less preservatives and everything back in the day was made better. <laughs> Let's face it. Everything's disposable anymore. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this is ready now. Mm -hmm. It's like a bubblegum color. It's pretty. So we'll just paint around his little tights. And we can put uh, the uh, hair back in. If you go over some of it, don't worry about it. We can use... Even marker, if you got markers, a white marker, you can use those if you goof up and, and uh, go over top of his beard. Don't worry about it. This is for relaxation and just to enjoy your creative time. Just need a little bit of time to yourself in these crazy days just to enjoy yourself being creative and losing yourself in your art that's what I like and time flies by and before you know it it's supper time And the multicolored ones were winter green. Winter green? I don't think we had those when I was growing up. I'm talking about the 60s and 70s. Well, more of the 60s when I was a young kid.
seems like ages ago. Time flies. Mm, let's see, I think that's icing too, right there. So if it's blotchy, that's fine. Icing can be blotchy. <laughs> Different strokes. I love winter mint. Yeah, I like winter mint. Um, back in the bush... The woods area behind where I used to live in uh, on the ground there was winter winter green and you could eat it have you ever tasted the leaves of winter green it's yummy let's see um my the wrapping here hmm we could go with this pretty blue here I think or an aqua. I think I'm going to go with this blue. No, well, why not? I haven't used these paints very much. So let's use them up. So let's uh, let that soak in a little bit. And his, the cake part, oh, I covered it up. Oh, well, we can, we can fix that by, I'm just going to use some burnt umber, just plain old burnt umber right out of the palette. And I think I missed a line on there. That's fine. If you see that in your uh, traceable, when you print it out, I missed a line. So you can fix that. So what was your traditions when you were growing up? Mine, we always opened our gifts on Christmas Eve instead of Christmas Day <laughs> and went to um, Midnight Mass. I'm going to put that green right in, right in here. I might just a little bit of green. A stripe. There. And then we'd have my grandma and my aunt over for Christmas dinner. And then they would bring their gifts over. So it was kind of like having two, two types of Christmas. Sometimes my uncle um, would come to and um, a big turkey, of course, and all the trimmings. It's a nice color. Okay, let's put this in. Of course, it'll always be a little bit lighter. Once it dries, a lot of times your colors will be lighter. So you can take that in consideration when you're figuring out how much water to add. I'm going to do my... Oh, sorry, guys.
my sister. She always forgets I'm streaming. like you, Lori, and your son. That's a good color. Now you could make this more masculine if you wanted to and do it in different colors. The rest of the day was spent, uh, let's see, Christmas morning we opened our stockings on our parents' bed. Then we marched down the hall in birth order to the Christmas tree. The rest of the day we spent at grandma's who were who we happen to live. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. It's funny how certain traditions, eh? I'm gonna, I have some skin tone that I had left on my palette. And all that was is a little bit of ochre color and some red and, and a lot of water. So let's just do his little nose that color. I'm going to do his um, leggings in. I'm going to mix some Payne's Gray with some Burnt Umber. And that will give you a really, really dark color. Almost black. You just have to play with the amount of each color to get it whatever um how black you want it might be a little bit on the blue side or a little bit on the brown side so you just have to change the ratio up a little bit little stockings and then I'm going to put the polka dots on probably with Posca or a gouache and then uh, maybe some confetti on the icing No, this isn't quite as dark as I want it, but we can darken it again, either with another coat or you could use uh, gouache if you wanted to. So I'll let that dry. Just let me hold on a minute. I want to just make sure there's nothing important going on there. talking about orchids <laughs> all right um, now let's do the the beard so the beard I'm gonna have quite a bit of water on my brush and I'm just gonna put a, a more dark streaks on the bottom part of his beard not as much on the top because your your beard kind of um, curves inward so it'd give a little bit more of a shadow look but if it's around the flowers you can add more around the flowers just to give that 
uh, shaded look. So around the petals, it'd be a little bit shaded. And in here, right in here. And if you put too much white on, we can always lighten it with some gouache in those areas. Don't worry. Don't get all bent out of shape <laughs> because you put too much on. There's always an easy way to fix this. Let's put a little bit of a shadow under that schnoz of his and it'd be a little bit shadowed right there from his hat I'm thinking and then I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow under that smirk okay so we're going to let that dry and the same applies with the uh, hat so I'm going to put a little bit more blue in it this time so I have some blue on my palette here. Kind of a muddy color you want. And let's see. there will be a little bit of a shadow in there. Or maybe there. Under here for sure. Under those. The poof of the chef's hat. And then I'm just going to sweep it down there. And along the side here. And just go a little bit there. Uh, underneath, just where you think the shadow would be. There's a little bit of a crease there, like that. Doesn't have to be a lot, just a bit. I think that's dry. So let's put some shadows in there. So we can either use another layer of that blue or you can use the gray because the because it's transparent the gray will show through so uh, we'll have areas where this is the paper on the cupcake so kind of down in the center of these things. Let's see how much it shows. Might have to put another layer in, we'll see. It's a little bit more darkness in here. And I'm looking at the top ridge, so where it dips inwards towards the cake, that would be uh, how the um, shadow would be. I'm just guessing on that one. like that and let's see a little bit in there and I'm gonna put right along the bottom here a little bit of a shadow just along the bottom now let's do a little bit of that um, let's use a do we have a darker? Yes, we do have a darker red color here. So let's use that and we'll do the shadows on the icing. Let's just spray that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of 
red with that skin tone color. I'm just going to put it underneath the bottom of his nose. Like that. Yeah, that's a nice dark color. So we should be able to get some fairly good. So there'll be highlight and there'll be um, shadow. So each line that is shown in here, underneath the line, put this shadow color in. This might need a little bit more on it. I'm not sure. We'll see. And then on the top of the line, you'll want to put the highlight. And I'm going to put a little bit around this candy cane in the mitt. And it can be different widths because it's icing, right? So there'll be some lighter area, thicker areas. So icings, different shapes. Even under here, I think I'll put where it would curl underneath. Be a little bit thicker there, maybe under here. You can put a little bit in there. Just keep adding till you till you like it. Now we'll add colored pencil probably to this too. And the um, shoes can have a little bit of a shadowed area just around the little rim here. I'm guessing it's rolled. On the bottom of the little, I don't know what they are, little. Slippers, maybe? I don't know. Kind of look like slippers. Like that. And then in the coat, where his arm is, a little bit. And here, just underneath his hair here, you could put some shadows. And I'm still using that same uh, gray color for the shadows. So he'd have a little bit of shadow under his arm here. And let's put some wrinkles in his coat. You don't have to get too crazy with the... I'm going to put a little bit of that underneath the icing here too on the cake. Just to make that a shadowed area. that and let's see what else what else can we do here i'm gonna darken a little bit more in the just real close to the flower here because it would be pretty dark shadows in there so let's put those in a little darker I'm going to even put it right here under his mitt. Uh, and the plant shows up a little bit better. And then just a little bit more under. I'm 
right close to the bottom. A little bit more. This needs it to be a little bit darker, like that. And now I'm going to mix up a little bit more. I've run out. So that was the Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber. Mix them together till you get the right consistency you want and the right color. So you might have to play a little bit with it, but um, let's see. I'm going to make his leggings, his tights, darker. So there's a little bit more paint versus water ratio. And that's why it's darker. So you can see that these are so simple to do. Nothing uh, major, but it gives you practice for um, using your watercolors. So if you're new at watercoloring, these are great for starters. Just so that you get used to how watercolor moves and works. You can try different things, different methods. Maybe you want to try the um, wet and to wet. Give that a try. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of that dark pink. And I'm going to just put in some areas um, in the flower here where the stems would be. Maybe some overlaps. We'll see. Sometimes you see them with, uh, they're multi-toned. Ever seen the poinsettias that are multi-toned? They're so pretty. Or they're speckled. I like those ones too. The white and the pink ones. Sometimes it's just the center area of the poinsettia. Where they're kind of sprays out into the side veins. They're so pretty. I know a lot of people keep them for quite a while. Doesn't do well here because of the cold. Because they do not like drafts. So don't put them by a window. Because they do not like to be near a draft of any kind. And uh, one good way of telling it's not liking where it is, the leaves will fall. So if your poinsettias are losing its leaves like crazy, you've got a draft on it. And it's not happy. <laughs> there. That looks pretty good. Alrighty, um, I think we can put a little bit of color in uh, the fur, so maybe just dabs here and there on the bottom part of the cuffs and the, I think this is the part of his skirt of the And let's see, I'm going to put a little bit of, a little more under his nose. Just a bit more. And just where those 
darkest darks would be. Put a little bit more. I'm going to go under his hat here too. Just a bit. Like that. Doesn't take much. Okay. And you could even do the candy cane. You don't have to get that detailed, but if you're doing it, why not try it? So on one side of the candy cane, might have a little bit of shadow. Like that. All right, so we're, we'll dry that and then we'll use some colored pencils, I think. You have to make sure it's good and dry if you're going to use colored pencils or pens. All right, so I have a bunch of colored pencils beside me in a um, Lazy Susan. <laughs> and let's see, I want, uh, let's start off with white. So this is a Prisma. And let's do the um, highlights on the frosting. And just go along that one edge. and add some white. So it's on top of those dark areas that you put in. And that's basically uh, all you do. Doesn't have to have bright, bright. We can, it depends if it's a shiny um, surface, then yeah, you want some really bright areas, but you don't have to do it on frosting. Most frosting is kind of uh, matte looking. It's not shiny per se. It's just a little bit matte looking. But it would have a little bit of a highlight. Okay. Like that. And then, let's see, I can put a little bit of a highlight on my berries here. And on my shoes, we could put a little bit of a highlight on the toes, just in a like little semicolon. And Maybe a little bit on the tops of his mitt. That. And his nose. Just a little bit of, right on the very top of his nose. You can put some there. Um, now I'm just going to go down those tops areas of this paper here. Now this could be foiled, maybe. Um, if it was, it's going to need a brighter, but we'll put some of this in first and then we'll take out a Posca. Like I said, I use whatever um, supply I have that's going to give me the right outcome. So, Posca, I like using Poscas. The, these are the... Uh, uni poscas i think they're 0.1 and let's put um, well we have a light area coming up the candy cane 
because they're shiny like that. I'm going to put a little bit of a shine on top of his nose. A little bit more on his shoes. Like that. Well, let's just put a little bit just on some of these curves. So it doesn't have to be the whole thing, but some of them. Where are they bumped out? Yeah. And on the papers, so wherever the, the um, zigzag on the top here, wherever they're sticking outwards, just put a little bit of uh, a shine on the, uh, that point, work it down. You don't have to put it on the, on the, um, all the way down. that there's a little bit of shine to these. Mm -hmm. That... Just gives it a little something, something. Looks cute. Hi, Laura. And then I think I'm gonna just do along the tops too, where it cur curves out. Just put a little bit of a um, little U shape in those areas that are sticking out like that and let's put no let's put um dots and circles in I'm gonna I'm gonna look at my folds and put a, the circles in accordingly. You don't have to do that be that fussy if you don't want to. I'm just crazy that way. You want to learn about design or fabrics, how to draw them and paint them, let me know in the um, description below and I'll make sure to add that to the list for next year streams. So whatever you're wanting to learn, let me know. That's the only way I can find out is if you guys Put it in the description. It's cute.
that. This one. Trying to make it um, as even as possible as far as the amount. Let's see. This one here, I think. Could use some. Maybe one here. Like that. And I could take the um, pen afterwards and add a black line around those if you wanted to. Polka dots on his tights. You can add different colors too, would be cute. Mm. Let's put some, let's see, what other color do I have? <laughs> Bright green on his tights. Oh, where did that other green go? Put some green on, maybe bigger ones, bigger circles. pretty good and hmm, what else I want to put some gold in the flower centers some gold spots might have to and you could get your embossing powder out. You could do all kinds of stuff. Well, it's not really showing that much. Um, let's get a flat or a bigger brush. Oh, there's one. I'll get a fan brush. And I'm going to do some splats. Need a little bit of splash, and I'm going to use that maybe some green. There we go. And let's try it. Hey, Quint.
There's a traceable down below plant if you're interested in downloading it and trying it out. I'm just going to take a little bit of black pen and just add a few lines here and there. Right. So a little bit of line work. Let's see what we got here. Just to add just a few little lines in here. I don't know. This one. That one doesn't look like it's working. Maybe might need to use a marker. What's this one? Just a little bit here and there. Maybe a little bottom here. in the dips here where the shadows would be a little bit darker. Maybe along some of the edges here. Like that. That's cute. Oh, let's see. Give that a little dry. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of a darker color under the frosting here just to darken it up a little bit more. Let's see. Mm, I want a fairly dark color. Maybe purple would work. Mm, let's try this. I'm just 
wanting a little bit more definition. Like of all, I'm always telling you, you need contrast. And the best way is to have a really good contrast between lights and darks. And then you'll have success in whatever it is you're drawing. That goes with a graphite too. If you're uh, trying to do some graphite drawings and you're finding they're just not there, they're just not getting to the point where you're liking it, check your contrast. A lot of times you could darken or have some lighter areas. And it doesn't take much. A lot of times it's just so, so minimal. You're, you wouldn't think that it would have that much of an impact, but it does really makes a difference. Even beside the leg here would have a little bit of a shadow. All right, maybe even under his nose a little bit. Okay, Put that there. And there's a traceable for you in the links, or not the links, I keep saying that in the description below where you download if you want to give this a try it's cute all right let's put i'm going to put some rings around some of these because they're just not popping out enough for me so if we put some rings around it should show a little bit more That's cute. So little polka dotted papers. That's cute. This would, I think this would make a cute birthday card. So just take the point set out and put in uh, a Christmas or a Christmas, a present instead. And then you'd have a Christmas card. Oh my gosh. I see I can't think and um, paint at the same time <laughs> or sketch. Anyone else like that, or is it just me? A little bit of sketchy in here. There, like that. And I'm going to put just a few more 
little hairs in here. Just squigglies, so you could follow those marks you've already put on. That would work too. Put a little more flyaway hairs. And right in here. I could take a Posca too and put some white ones in over top of this little suit. Ah, where's my white Posca? There it is. Hey, Dorothy. Well, there's a traceable for you if you want to do it. So just a few little fuzzies in his hair, in his um, beard. Like that. Sandra, is this on watercolor? Yeah, it's on watercolor paper. Um, I think I'm gonna get a yellow. And put yellow in the center of those poinsettias. Just a little, I don't know if you'll even notice it, but. Oh well, you see it up close. I'll show you in a minute. Make them bigger area. Okay. Here, I'll show you. Here. It's cute. It's got shimmer on it. Shimmer paints. Ganzai Tambi, I think they call them. And let's just, one last thing, and I want to add a little bit more shadow on the um, bottom here. Just on the one side. Okay. I think he's done. He's cute. And let's sign it. And today it's the 27th. So 12, 27, 22. And there we go. He's all done. Yeah, isn't he cute? So make sure you check out the uh, description below and get your traceable and you know, give it a try. You could use whatever you want. Pencil crayons, watercolor, craft paint, whatever you want to do and put it on. You could put it on anything really and um, have fun with it. All right. So... You guys have a fantastic rest of the day, and we'll see you on Thursday. And I'm not sure yet what I'm going to be doing. Kathy, that must be my birthday. Oh, that's right. Your birthday's coming up. Yes, it's Dot's birthday cake. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's 27th, 28th, 29th. 30th. Yours is on Friday, your birthday. Uh, 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, it must be Friday. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go. You have a fantastic day, and we will see you Thursday. Have fun, everyone.